How's it going guys? It's Baltimax here. I am doing a video on is jewelry a good investment? Some of you guys may already know the answer to that and what jewelry is a good investment versus what isn't. So I'll kind of go over that in this video. Before I do that, make sure you like and subscribe. And also I have some examples of pieces from different companies that I will be using in this video. I'll kind of you know show those on the screen as I'm talking about them. And we're going to be looking at you know what the prices of gold and silver have done over the last 50 years. That will be kind of a good uh, base to go off of if buying something is going to be a good investment. All right, well, let's get this video started. Okay, so is jewelry a good investment? Well, I'll tell you what is not a great investment, and that would be like gold-plated brass, uh, stainless steel, things like that. Gold-plated silver is a little holds its value a little more than those, I would say. Actually, quite a bit more. Uh, so you can keep that in mind. Also, buying, let's say, like Mosinite or CZs, those don't hold their value uh, over time, unfortunately. I'm a big fan of Mosinite, but, you know, as far as resale value goes, you know, jewelers, you know, they don't want nothing to do with them. So keep that in mind as well. Now, when it comes to diamonds, diamonds are different. Diamonds, you know, they don't really hold their value. You know, when you buy it from a jeweler, as soon as you walk out that door, it loses half its value right then and there, very quick. And most diamonds that do hold their value are pieces that the average person cannot afford, right? I mean, these are like one of a kind, uh, you know, necklaces or pendants or rings, you know, we're talking like, I would say like 10 carats and above, you know, just ridiculously priced jewelry that only like the super rich wear. Those definitely hold their value and, um, you know, they probably go up in price over time, right? So that's kind of it going over diamonds. But live diamonds, they lose their value a lot. You know, I think it's kind of lame that they do. Um, your resale value is going to be like, 90% less than what you paid for, which is kind of crazy, but that, that's just how it is, unfortunately. So we covered that. Now let's move on to gold and silver. Now silver, since 1973, so 50 years ago, has gone up about 900% in value. It was at, I think, uh, yeah, $2.5 per ounce, which is about nine cents per gram. And nowadays it's around $23, $24 per ounce, which, you know, equates to about 80 cents per gram. So Gus Fia, we'll use them as an example. I bought a Miami Cuban link chain from them uh, a few months back. It was uh, 950 silver. And so most of these gold and silver prices I'll be using are based off, you know, 99% nine, silver and 99% gold which would be 999 silver and 24 karat gold. So I bought this chain, I don't know, eight months ago, I paid around $900 for it. It had 250 grams worth of silver. So if you times 250 grams times 80 cents, that equals about $200. So a $900 silver chain, you know, has $200 worth of silver in it not the best you know ratio but you know those those Miami Cubans you gotta you know take in you know the cost of labor right so at $200 for 250 grams of silver how long would it take where that would actually make money well if we're going off of you know what it's done over the last 50 years right it's gone up 900% so $200 needs to go up half that right so 450 percent to equal 900 so that would be 25 years till you make your money back so that's not a great investment right i did all the math 
trust me, that's that's what it equals out. To. Silver, jewelry, not the best investment. Now let's move to gold, right? So gold in 1973 was at $3.50 per gram. Pretty crazy, right? I think it's around $90, something like that per ounce. But I'm trying to keep it at per gram because most people don't buy jewelry per ounce, right? That's a lot of gold and silver if you're doing that. So at $3.50 per gram for 24 karat gold. And then nowadays, it's at $68 per gram for 24 karat, right? So that has increased 2,000%, 20 times. Remember, silver was nine times. We don't know what the future holds when it comes to, you know, the price of gold and silver, but we can assume it's going to rise, right? Let me look at the price of everything right now. Everything's going up. So we could probably assume that that's going to happen at what rate we don't know but we're going to base it off you know the last 50 years so we're going to use a jacoji pendant for an example this pendant is an angel pendant it's 22 carat it weighs 13 and a half grams now 22 carat is 91 point uh, I, I don't remember exactly but 91 something percent gold so that's your best option. If you're going to get gold, get the higher carat, 18, 22, if you can. But, you know, 14 carats, not, a, you know, the, the worst option either. But anyways, this pendant is 13 and a half grams. And he charges $1,400, which is a little over $100 per gram. Shikoji, you know, that's actually not bad. I've seen 14 carat pieces of jewelry over $100 a gram. So... That, that's pretty good. So how long till you're going to see a return or you're going to make your money uh, back at least, right? So 13 and a half has 12.3 grams of 24 karat gold in it. So 12.3 times $68 is $836 and some change. So, you know, that's not too bad based off of the price. The price was $1,400, where, you know, if you times that by two, that's more than the price uh, of the piece cost, seeing that it was $1,400. Where the silver chain, for example, you know, if you times, you know, the $200 worth of silver that was in it, that would only, times it by two, be $400. So buying gold is always a, the best option when it comes to buying jewelry, no matter what you do. So if, you know, if we do the 2000% over 50 years, how long till we make our money back, right? Well, every 10 years, gold increases 400%, right? So we'll, talk, we'll half that, right? So every five years, gold increases 200%, right? So if we do the $836 by times two, you've made your money back and then some with the gold, that is. So gold, you know, you could be a good investment. They say it's, you know, some people say it's not, but it's gonna take time to make your money back, obviously. And, but if we go by what it's done over the last 50 years, it can take anywhere probably from five to 15 years before you make your money back and then some. But the thing that is probably your best option when it comes to jewelry and being an investment is luxury watches. If you don't know, it's the increase of like, let's, let's use Rolex as an example, that it's it's increased more than gold and oil has. I mean, it's insane. You could buy, you know, the right watch one year and then two years later, it's, you know, double the price. So I'd say, you know, gold is second and luxury watches is number one when it comes to good investments. I didn't cover emeralds, sapphires, and other precious stones. Maybe I'll do that in another video. I just wanted to stick with, you know, you know, diamonds, lab diamonds, CZs, most of night, silver, gold, gold plated stuff. So, um, but appreciate you guys watching and make sure you like and subscribe and I will see you on my next video. Ultimax out.